many times when working with scientific data, you'll have many, many experiments, and so many, many rows of data that you're going to process. And you could use your data in a calculator to calculate the things you want to calculate, but if you've got a hundred different data points and you wanted, for instance, to take the sign of those data points, it would be an awful lot of work. So using spreadsheets can save you that unnecessary work. So for instance, let's say I wanted to graph the sine of x. So I could have two columns, I'll label them x and the sine of x. And I want to do a bunch of values and then see uh, what their sign is. Now I could do this with a calculator, but like I said, this would be a lot of work. So instead, what we'll do is generate the x column and Notice that these are spaced out by uh, 0.1. So if I just drag down, it's going to assume that I want a data series. So I can make that as long as I want. And if I did this with a calculator, it might take me 10 seconds for each of these. But instead, what we're going to do in Excel is use formulas. And other spreadsheet programs work pretty much the same as Excel. So once you've learned how to use Excel, you can use other spreadsheet programs if you need to. So to use a formula, you just type in an equal sign. And that tells the spreadsheet that what it's going to store in that cell is not what you're typing in, but a formula based on what you type in. So we want to, we want to base it on sign. So we're going to say we want the sign of that number. Now the cool thing about formulas is that when you copy them, they're copied in a relative way. So this formula, which says take the sign of what's ever in cell A2, so this is A2, when we copy it, it will adjust itself to the other cells. So I can copy a couple of different ways. I can copy and paste. I can actually just grab this little handle here and pull down. Or if I double click on that handle, it'll just automatically go to the bottom. Okay, You can see it's an awful lot faster than um, doing things by hand. So if I wanted to use this to generate a graph of a, of a sine wave, I could just take this and get all my data. And then I could insert a graph. So we'll say we want to, usually the graphs you're going to do are going to be scatter plots. Okay. So looking at this, I say, oh, you know what? The data points are too close together. We can't really see that it's a sine wave. So the cool thing about spreadsheets is we don't have to redo all our work. We can adjust it, and it'll update itself. So instead of saying steps of 0.1, maybe I'll make it steps of 0.2. So I'll go from 0.1 right to 0.3, and I'll copy that down. OK, so now I go, OK, that looks like it might be a sine wave. Well, why don't we make the adjustment even bigger? Let's just go ahead and start at 0 and go all the way up to 0 0.5. So we'll go in steps to 0.5, adjust that, boom. Now we can see that clearly that it's a sine wave. So you can see that would have taken a long time with the calculator. Okay, So I uh, highly recommend making sure that you're proficient on Excel. One little trick I'll show you while we're here is that if you want to know what's in these, the formula that are in these different cells, you can click on the cells and you see it up here, but there's a cool trick where uh, you hit control tilde, and that's what's on a Mac. It's, it's probably different on a, a PC, but it's something similar. You can just Google to see what the answer is. I'm using a Mac. So I do control tilde, and so tilde is the little squiggle that's on the upper left of your keyboard, so control tilde, and that toggles it so it shows, instead of the numbers, it shows the formula, and I can toggle back by doing control tilde again. So that's a, a great way to look at all the formula on your sheet.